Jeff Green got sideways there underneath the 27 car. Casey Atwood almost lost control. And a big... Oh, trouble, trouble. Oh, and one car upside down. Casey, Casey Atwood. Atwood. And sliding through the grass, Kenson winds around. White and yellow flag. Atwood's car is destroyed. Leading this oh, look at Earnhardt. Earnhardt got sideways. Somebody looked like made some contact. Uh-oh, we've got a problem. Contact here, for sure. Darrell Walter from Joe Uh-oh, Walter's car gets on the truck and over and over. Darrell Walter tumbling down the backstretch in what appears to be a very, very serious crash. Oh, the level and in trouble is 07, LaJoy. Randy LaJoy slamming into the wall. Randy LaJoy out of Norwalk, Connecticut, destroying his automobile. Randy LaJoy. Did you notice just momentarily he hit that brake pedal? It's a lot easier to just touch that brake than to let off the gas to slow that truck down. Just staying up high going in the corner. He's not following the truck The truck in front of him. Don't know what's going on there. Whoa. Oh, look out. We got trouble. This is going to hurt. Uh-oh. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yep. Keep your fingers crossed. Running in a, in a tight little pack, wasn't a lot of cars in that race, it was like 12 cars. And I remember the guy behind me, uh, Jody Ridley at the time, coming out of turn four, barely nudged in the back of my, hit me in the back bumper, barely nudged me, but it did, it broke my car loose. And when it did, it started sliding to the infield. But about that time, it got airborne. The car went up, everything got really quiet. It went up pretty high in the air. I remember being way up in the air. After that, when it came down and hit, uh, if you'd asked me what happened, I'd say, well, I came back down, hit the ground, it knocked the wind out of me, because I remember hearing all the air leave my, leave my body just like you do when you listen to the NFL game tapes when the guys hit each other and you hear the, hear the wind get knocked out of somebody. I heard that. The next thing I remember, I'm waking up and the car is upright and they're basically working to get me out of the car. I remember that and uh, didn't remember anything else. I mean, it, it just like I guess I went to sleep during that time and uh, probably glad I did because I didn't have any bad memories of it other than the aches and pains that hung around for quite a while. Trouble off trouble board. Trouble. Newman slams the wall. Mar oh, man. Oh, comes Schrader, and Newman is in Newman. the air oh. and over. Ryan Newman, last year's rookie of the year. Oh, the rear God. end ripped from the car. Of course, look at that thing lift up, Larry. Just takes off like an airplane. That's 3,400 pounds, folks. Just lifting up in the air like a feather. And the right rear wheel digs into the dirt and tears the whole rear end loose from the car. Yeah, if the tire hadn't come off of the wheel, it probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have turned over like that. But once the wheel, the tire came off and it just had, it dug in and flipped it. Let's watch her here and see what happens. Oh, well, Kenny Schrader got out of control, got into him. Oh, is, that's what happened, Mike. His right rear tire came off. Car goes airborne. Then when it hits the ground, it digs in and just rips it apart. sight to see out your windshield. There you see Ryan Newman right there. Oh yeah, he waved to the crowd. All right, buddy. Jarrett and Earnhardt were capable to pull away a little bit. They're trying to oh, break again. Trouble behind Rusty Wallace is turning over. Rusty Wallace, 20 feet in the air, spinning, crashing. Well, I'll tell you, when they're running that close together and jockeying around position, you just know that things like this are going to happen. And a very unfortunate situation for Rusty Wallace. Racing here. back racing to the line. To the flag. But Dale it's, and Harvick's getting a run off turn four. It's going to be a drag race all the way back to the start finish line. No caution. They're side by side, right to the line. Big crash. Here they come. Checkered flag. Harvick. Kevin Harvick 
wins the Daytona 500. We got one car and there's still on his roof coming across the start finish line. Still like wrecking. Boyer. They're wrecking everywhere. Boyer's on fire. Jeff Gordon's wrecked. And they Montoya. are still wrecking. Montoya, Stremi, Kenseth, Biffle, Marlin, Carl Edwards, Casey Mears all crashed on the final lap. New one for the record books. Have you ever? Well, a couple of times. I'm going to repeat what I heard a few years ago. No, I have never. <laughs> I got so excited I broke the damn mirror in half. Jeff Gordon's day ends about like his teammates. Clint Boyer came across the start finish line on his roof. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. This. David Stremme's climbed out. He is okay. Sterling Marlin. Who slid across to the to a stop? Firstly, racing for a position. Unfortunately for them, they're about uh, two thirds. Well, jumping behind. in the back straightaway. Dale Earnhardt is into the wall. Looked as though he was tapped by Dale Jarrett coming off the corner. Racing side by side. Earnhardt hit the outside wall hard and rolled down the back straightaway. Earnhardt's car will spin off to the apron of the racetrack in the middle of the back straightaway. Took a hard lick to that outside wall. Let's go back to Joe Moore. Drafted, formed up down on the inside. There were. It's the big one. It's what we've all been fearing. This kind of racing is going to happen. A horrible crash on the back straightaway that began when Tony Stewart got turned sideways against the backstretch wall number 20. God help all of them because there's no place to go. It looks like everybody's going to walk away from this crash. Yeah. Ho! Crash, crash. Well, Rusty got through it. Get Here we go. Harvick slides up in front of traffic. Cars upside down, cars everywhere. And turn four is calamity corner once again. Watch the 22 of Scott Wimmer, the yellow car, take a wild ride here. What started it, Greg Biffle came down in the 10, or the 10 went up into Greg Biffle. They got together anyhow. The luckiest man there was uh, Rusty Wallace. Got a little tap, but kept on going. Now watch Wimmer over once, twice, Three on his nose, four, wham. Huge. I can't tell you what it does to you. You just pray that when you stop that you can remember what happened. I think Scott Wimmer will remember this one for a long time. Bobby Hamilton has impressed us all with his strategy, stuck to his game plan, and now here he is getting ready to battle for the win at Daytona. Got a side-by-side -side battle for the lead. Whoa, whoa, Prowse early on. Chad Chaffin gets spun around and upside down. Chaffin back onto his wheels, and we were on board with Dennis Setzer. Dennis made some contact. Looks like he was trying to bump draft him, and he got Chad turned around. There's Terry, Terry Cook after such a great effort. He was involved in that action a little bit. Another wild ride. Final corner at Daytona. Who's going to get here first? Regan Smith, 7. Keslowski, 22. Stewart, 33. And contact. Smith turned around. Tommy Stewart is going to win this race. A terrible crash coming to the finish. This is a big, big race. Kyle Larson's car with the front end. And Jeff is working him over. Look at that. Jeff's going to move him up out of the groove and get by him. Whoa, Bush is around. Can he save it this time? Oh, there you go. He does. He saves it. But there's a Jeff, Jeff, car Jeff Gordon's outside. upside down. Jeff Gordon's upside down. And Kurt Bush's car is destroyed. Oh my gosh. Jimmy Johnson's car destroyed. Ryan Newman off turn four for the final time. Blaney to the outside, oh. to the inside. Here comes Hamlin up the outside. Wow. Crash into the wall, into the air goes oh. Newman. Upside down. 
in a shower of sparks on his roof. Ryan Newman comes across the line fourth and comes to rest. Scoring unofficial. Junior to the bottom of the track. Junior will win at Daytona. And the big one happens behind them. Oh my God. The three of Austin Dillon into the catch fence. All the crews getting out to that car to assist these drivers. Thumbs going up from all the crew members and the crowd roars. Look at the catch fence on the front straight. Members pulling. Austin Dillon out. He's walking. The damage to the four of Kevin Harvick. What an incredible sight to see Austin Dillon walking away from that three car that is demolished. Yeah, the 11 gets kind of stuck in the middle there and gets comes across the four's bumper as he does. He spins back in, gets the three airborne, and he just gets projected off the other cars right up into the fence. He went from the bottom of the racetrack over two rows of cars and into that catch fence. Here we go. You can see him on the bottom. Rex starts in front. He runs in the back of the 24, gets up on the 11. Now he's on top of the 50.5, and now it's just a long for the ride. Yeah, Watch the car that. stop. Watch the car stop. It gets into those poles, and it goes from, I don't know, what, 180, 190 miles an hour, I'm just guessing, to a complete stop. That is unbelievable. And that, it looks like a tour. That's 3,500 pounds. That, that stock car is extremely heavy. You see here, after he's upside down, the two is, is spinning. Obviously, he's already lost control, makes more contact with the three. Eleven and the four to get together. Here we are at the start finish line. It just pushes the three up into the air enough that it rolls over the top of a car. And then that momentum just continues to move him into the catch fence. Hang on, this will be a wild ride. That was Tony Stewart going underneath the three. And here was the response from Austin Dillon. After he got out, pulled the helmet off. The crowd was roaring at this point in time. Yeah, this has to be the best side of the night. You know, this is the, the scary part of auto racing. So when you see a big accident, you see Austin Dillon get out, he's removing. What he's removing there is his head and neck restraint. It connects to his helmet to keep his helmet from, from overextending somewhere. A Hans device, that's another version of it. Another safety uh, innovation, really, that's been required in NASCAR for a few years now. The white flag is out. They're going to crash. Sauter with a big run. They're crashing. Christopher Bell upside down. That hurts, and that thing landed about six or eight times pretty hard. What about Brandon Brown? He slides through there. Looks like he's going to be credited with a fourth place finish. I think he might have got in the back of William Byron, and that's what got in the back of the four of Christopher Bell and turned him sideways. And what? now, under caution, Juan Pablo Montoya has crashed and gone aflame. Holy cow, what happened? We just got a report that he was complaining about a bad vibration in every gear. No, I, Larry, he just slammed he into the jet dryer. I think he slammed into the jet dryer. 
They're trying to clear debris off the racetrack and the car brakes won't steer and he slides up the track and into the back of that surplus helicopter jet engine on a trailer used to dry the racetrack. Uh, Mike, I saw sparks coming out from the car as if it had a tire down or something. What an incredible turn of events. I've never, I've never in my life. Oh my gosh. And all that spilled jet fuel found something hot to ignite it. Safety workers quickly on the scene. And this is a bizarre twist to this Daytona 500. He's going to be mirror driving. Oh, Stewart's trying to squeeze right there, in there. Eddie. See he's that hand? shoving to the bottom. Oh, he just wanted to touch him, man. Just wanted to touch him. Can't get him touch to him. the high side. Outside. Here he comes. No, there he, he turns him. He turns him. Bush in the oh, wall. Here comes Stewart to the checkered Tony flag. Stewart. And another car oh, gets him to the backside. It's Casey Kane. And they're scattering oh, everywhere as they come to the line. Some of these guys hit hard, man. Oh, and one of them was Kyle Busch. They're still hitting hard. Man, he's a setting duck. They're going to come by him like he put on the brakes. Yeah, watch the run these drivers get that are lined up. Here comes Dale Earnhardt Jr. right there in the 88. Watch Burton. Oh, 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 here we go. Here we go. And she's all right after a hard crash, and the caution flag is out. Somebody's going to come down into her, I think. Almarola. Yeah, right there. He got on the bumper of it. Looked like McMurray's car, the one, turned him a little bit to the left. Thank God for safer barriers. That was a hard, hard lick. It's almost that car didn't even look like it slowed down as it was going across there. Bottom, bottom, bottom. There you go. You dig it. Three wide. Places. Let's go on board. Bottom, bottom, bottom. There you go. You dig it. Three wide. Is that is that not? Did you see what she did with her hands? Yeah, all that open wheel experience. The Indy Darryl. car, all that open wheel experience. She knew not to hold on to that steering wheel. That is amazing. I saw her do that here in the ARCA race a couple years ago. If you hold on to the wheel there, you can break. You got him, Mikey. You got him, man. You got him. Come on, man. Come on, baby. Come on. Get him in the fold. Get him in the three car. Oh! Big trouble. Oh. Big wreck behind them. Beat him back. Beat back. Come on. To the flag. Come on, Mikey. You got it, man. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Mikey! Come on! Michael Walsh. He's all right, isn't he? You okay? You okay? Saw the crash and saw the car sitting over there and saw the ambulances and everything. And it just, it, you know, it looked really dramatized and really dramatic looking, you know, and it just uh, looked odd. This is undoubtedly one of the toughest announcements that I've ever personally had to make. Uh, but after the accident and turn four at the end of the Daytona 500, uh, we've lost Dale Earnhardt.